Well, hello everyone. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Thank you for being part of this wonderful community here to hear from you what you're working on, maybe, uh, or what you like about Pascal, even dislike. So, you know, ideas for moving into 26. So, because we're not that far away. Um, but anyway, so today's video, we're going to be looking at at a things you might have missed uh, or things that have happened in the last week in the realms of uh, object Pascal, we'll say modern Pascal. So we're going to be looking at Pass Build 1.1, I should say, uh, Cortex Pascal, um, AVR Pascal, uh, Rad Studio 13 Florence, and then of course we've got a programming tip as always. So where shall we start, hey? Well, let me... Why don't we start with pass build then? So in the previous video, we mentioned that 1.0 had come out. Well, now we are already at 1.1. So his, uh, changes have been made to... Um, for comprehensive multi-build support for organizing related projects within a single build tree. So the major feature in this release enables you to structure complex projects as a collection of coordinated modules. And there was a, a comment here or note here which explained you know, how it would sort of work here. So um, I'm just trying to find that right now. Oh, here we go. So basically, um, my understanding is here is that what it can do is to it'll discover all the modules, it can then calculate the correct build order based on your declared dependencies, build each module in sequence, etc. So um, if you are into tools which uh, make the development of software much easier, whether that's in the um, initialization, the building, the deployment and testing and everything else in that space there, then this might be uh, one of those tools that's worthy of your looking at. So, um, and it is based on the uh, Maven project, I believe, um, from the world of Java developers development. Uh, so yeah, Maven inspired built automation tool. So there is that one and like I said it is on github if you want to have a look download and play with that one so the next one off the cab rank will be cortex pascal so I've been reading about this one over a while um, it's only on Windows at the moment there is plans for a Linux version but I'm not quite sure when that will be available but what it does do is it's a um, QTX for short, it's an object Pascal IDE compiler, runtime library, development system, and what it will do for you is to generate high performance JavaScript, which allows you to tap into uh, web technology and enjoy the full might of modern mobile, desktop, and server development. And then if we run down to the very bottom of this article, then the idea here is to, uh, well, not so much just levering your existing skill set. So you don't necessarily need to learn JavaScript, although that would be uh, maybe helpful for us or, or for you. Um, but um, uh, so when you are looking at um, planning or implementing a web version of your existing desktop, well, this one might be worthy of your looking at. So keep that one in mind. Um, so now going from web technology into let's say microcontroller and uh, embedded system type development we have over here uh, a new version or new release of the AVR Pascal IDE and if you wander over to the freepascal.org website or forums um, and you'll see here the changes with all the features that have been added in. So we're looking at a new port for free BSD 13, 64 bit package installer. Um, he's mentioned also about a significant reduction of executable file sizes, and you've got some numbers there 
uh, improved detection of blocking directives to handle more complex constructions. Uh, but um, if you want to go, if you are unsure of uh, what this particular uh, tool uh, can do, does or can do for you, well, basically it is a, an IDE designed for AVR microcontrollers, the AT tiny and the AT mega families, but you're using Pascal versus C or C++. Um, so, and it will leverage the free Pascal compiler to compile source code, and you can then transfer that code to the microcontroller to run it and so on. So, also there you've also got the UNO library as well here, so, uh, which basically it's a library for a Junio UNO for the uh, Junio Uno platform. So, um, if you do embedded control, uh, embedded system type development, and you are using uh, AT Tiny or AVR microcontrollers, have a look at this one. If you haven't, or you want to jump into this sort of space, well, have a look at this. Um, Delphi, what's happening in the world of Delphi today? Well, there was, how recent was this particular one here? December 11, we've got the announcing the availability of Red Studio 13 Florence. So we're looking at the uh, latest and greatest from Ember Cardero here. So it is um, happy to announce the uh, Rad Studio 13 Florence, along with Delphi 13 and C++ Builder 13 for customers starting today. It offers a 64-bit um, version of the Rad Studio IDE, updated C++ builder, um, C Lang compiler, Delphi language extensions, AI components, I'm just going to say, and much, much more. So have a look at this blog article if you are um, interested in reading about it, if not using it. Um, obviously, they've added in the ternary operator into this version. Um, I can just hear the flame wars or the wars between the uh, free Pascal or the let's say the older style Pascal developers versus you know a changing of the guard changing with times uh, like I said it does have AI support in here as well so um, web stencils as well in here so have a look at this one here uh, let me know what you think what's missing what don't you like what do you like about it I would love to hear your thoughts about you know the new the new version. So I think we are just about done with the uh, new information. So now it's time to jump into a programming tip. Our programming tip for today. Now probably you would not put or you shouldn't put code that you have intentionally commented out into your repository but putting that aside there are going to be times when you may want to comment out a block of code now before um, such functions became part of an IDE you would see programmers just wandering down their code you know just going line down double comment line down double comment line down double comment the alternative would be to um, do something like this whoops Of course, the problem here might be then if you are using those sorts of comments already. Now, it's a bit hard to see that this code here is commented, but you'll just need to take my word that it is. But again, the problem here is if you've got, let's say, two opening braces, it doesn't necessarily detect that. So that's why I'm using a double slash there. Now, if you do have a block of code here which you want to comment out then in the source menu here and the shortcut keys are over here obviously but what you can do here is to comment a selection and what it will do is for every line that has been selected it will put a comment um, in front of it comment marker so and so we can now turn that off as well if we wanted to so it's just a little um, small as it may be, it's a little thing to help to increase our productivity. 
if we want to again use the shortcut keys that is control shift and V to put the comment on take the comment off control shift and U another one you may want to uh, look at also in the same breath here is that you can also toggle a comment in the selection here so again we've got our code that's been commented so control and the forward slash comment on comment off so rather than having to memorize two keys you've only got one key which is a slash here so uh, just a very small productivity um, tool to make your life a bit easier when it comes to you know maybe working out or debugging code to work at where a problem may be occurring um, I would encourage you to look at other functions in the menu of your um, IDE to see what you can and cannot do there so Play around with those and see what damage you can do to your code. Um, now, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Ah, also with Cortex, I just want to make a sh short note about um, the Cortex Pascal. I've just started having a, a brief chat and also sort of like a hello world sort of message to John and he's um, interested in doing a video with me. The author of um, Cortex Pascal. So next year, you know, um, my hope is that we could have a chat with him and a, uh, to see the motivations behind Cortex Pascal and to show, you know, the world what it can do. So um, and again, if you are, it's a good stepping stone into the world of JavaScript. If you have us, you know, where you can lever right, leverage your skills in Pascal there. So um, anyway, that's that one. Next week, um, I hope to do a video. It will be the last one for this year. Um, and where we will talk about, well, I will talk about things that I'd like to do next year as well. Um, and I'd love your feedback between maybe now and then to let me know what um, topics you would like me to have a look at, what tools, um, anything in that scope. And we can maybe try and go through them one by one. So um, until then. Have a good week in your programming journey um, and peace out and I'll see you on the other side.